Charlie turned around to see Maddie, and his heart skipped a beat. What happened while I was gone? Since when did you girls start mingling with nobodies like him? Suddenly, Charlie walked over to Maddie, and he pulled her close. There you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. I've missed you. And then he kissed her on the lips, and Brianna was even more surprised than Maddie at Charlie's move. Elisha gritted his teeth and walked away. Wow, what was that about? I've been wanting to say it the whole week, but not on the phone. I do feel the same way. I care about you too, Maddie, a lot. Madison hugged him and smirked at Brianna. Once everyone knew that Maddie and Charlie were dating, his life in school took a 360-degree turn. People stopped to smile at him, say hello, crack jokes. Why does it feel like even the teachers are nicer to me? The other two Barbie angels welcomed him into their gang, and being with Madison was a dream. They went on long walks, watched sunsets, ate ice cream, and kissed on top of a Ferris wheel. But later that night, Brianna and Amber cringed hearing Maddie throw up. Is Charlie trying to kill me? That gross ice cream at the amusement park made me sick, and my feet hurt from the long walks. And what is so fascinating about freaking sunsets? I think it's sweet. Yeah, because you're not the one suffering. But there is one thing about Charlie. He sure can kiss. Makes you feel like you're the only girl in the world. Ugh, please, spare us the makeout details. Okay, okay. Listen, Brianna, try giving him a hint about planning fancier dates for me. I know he's poor, but come on, he's dating me. The next day, while Charlie was watching football practice, the ball suddenly came in his direction, and he gave it a strong kick back. Hey, kid, you play football? I used to, but I don't have time now. Come on, grab some shoes and join for a game. Just then, Charlie caught Elijah looking at him like he was a bug, and that motivated him. Elijah was coming at him aggressively, but Charlie dodged him and kicked the ball straight into the goalpost. Charlie, you're a natural. You have to join the team. Sir, I really don't think I can commit to practice. Kid, just try it out for a month and see if it works, okay? Elijah, you better watch out. He's gonna give you a run for your money. Charlie ran off to the locker room to put back the cleats, but when he walked out, someone had pushed him to the ground. What the heck, dude? I just don't understand why a low-class idiot like you is in this school. I'm here on scholarship, which means I earned my spot here. But that doesn't mean you belong here. Well, Maddie doesn't think so, and the coach... Don't let the coach's stupid words get to your head. And as for Maddie, gosh, you're a moron. Do you really think... Just then, someone pushed Elijah away hard. Dude, seriously, what is wrong with you? Why are you jumping to his defense? Because he's my friend. And what, are you threatened by a little competition on the field? Oh, please, this loser just had beginner's luck today. I'll crush him next time, and he won't have mommy out there to defend him. <laughs> Elijah and his friends went out laughing as Charlie picked up his bag and fished out a broken snow globe. Great, this was for Maddie. She's so excited about her Vogue photo shoot coming out, and I wanted to give her something thoughtful. Maybe you could do something a little extra Rent a car, get some flowers, go out for a nice dinner. Girls like being pampered. Wow, yeah, that sounds nice. Thanks, Brianna. Also for saving my butt. Also for calling me your friend. You're welcome. This is the place you were raving about? And why don't you have a reservation? It's walk-ins only, but it's so worth the wait. After 30 minutes, when they finally got a table, the place was dirty and loud. Isn't the energy of this place something else? Yeah, it's something. Oh my god, I just felt something on my foot. Maybe it was my foot. But just then, a mouse jumped onto Maddie's lap. She screamed and started jumping around like a maniac. Then she tripped on her dress and went crashing straight into another table. Ah! Oh. My. God. Madison, I am so sorry. Why would you bring me to this horrible place? And did you see all those people who were making videos of me? This is gonna be all over the internet. I get why you're upset. But you know, today's video is tomorrow's old news. No one remembers these things. Excuse me? Are you gonna explain to me how fame works? People don't forget anything. Once something's on the internet, it stays there forever. People can pull it out anytime they want. Ugh, this is officially the worst day of my life. With that, Madison stormed out of the car. Brianna couldn't stop laughing as she watched Madison's video posted online. But now, she had to do some damage control. So she called him as Maddie. I've had some time to cool down, and I'm sorry for going off on you like that. And I'm sorry about the mouse and the video. 
You're right. I don't know what it's like to be famous. It's the best and the worst. It's great to have people look up to you, but sometimes they talk about you like you're not even a real person. And imagine having your failures or embarrassing moments splashed across the news as entertainment. It sounds brutal. I'm almost glad I'm a poor nobody. As they were talking, Charlie ended up telling Brianna all about his amazing grandma and how she'd made him apply to the school. I just want to get myself into a good university so I can make something of myself and spoil my grandma rotten. She deserves the whole world. Well, you're definitely the guy who'd get it for her, Charlie. Over the next few weeks, Charlie found himself bewitched and confused by Madison. He felt closer than ever over their late night talks, but in person, she was totally unpredictable. One moment, she'd be all over him, and the next, she was snapping his head off. Charlie, do you think I'm fat? Um, no. Why did you pause before answering? What? No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You said, um, no. You even looked at me before replying. I shouldn't have looked? Why would you look? Don't you just know? Maddie, you're being irrational. Now I'm crazy, am I? Well, I'm not fat. I'm PMSing, so I'm bloated. I hadn't noticed, really. Ugh, you're so insensitive. You have no idea what it's like to go through this every month. Right now, I feel like killing someone. And I also really want that Thai red curry ice cream. I'll get it for you, babe. Whatever helps you feel better. You getting out of my face would make me feel better. And yes, the ice cream. Now. You got it. Amber and Maddie started <laughs> laughing hard as soon as Charlie was gone. <laughs> I really hope he gets a few tubs of that ice cream. Sounds delicious. I'm pretty sure there's no Thai red curry ice cream, but let's see what he does. Anyway, for Christmas, my parents and I are going to our ski resort as usual, and I'm inviting you girls with your parents. Should I invite Charlie? You have to, right? He's your boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. And at least three of my exes will be there. And I'd rather not show up single, but I'm gonna have to give Charlie a makeover before I take him. On his first day at the resort, Charlie slipped out of his room at 5 in the morning and found Brianna waiting in the kitchen. Oh, you're here. I almost thought you wouldn't come. I almost thought that too. I don't know why I agreed to this early morning skiing lesson. Because you're a good person and you like me? I'm just saving Maddie some embarrassment. Because you'll definitely make a fool of yourself without my help. Couldn't agree more. They headed out to one of the smaller slopes, and she explained skiing techniques to him. I think you're ready. Well, as ready as you'll ever be. If I die... Please break the news gently to Grandma. You play football against Elijah. You'll survive this too. Now don't be a wuss. Time to go! Brianna whizzed down the slope, and the cold wind in her face made her feel alive. She turned around to look at Charlie, who looked like a baby goat learning to walk. Charlie, just loosen up! Come on, I'm racing you down to the end! Charlie took a deep breath and relaxed. He was gaining momentum and actually starting to enjoy it. Brianna was flying ahead effortlessly, but he was catching up. But then suddenly, he was going too fast. He tried to slow down, but he just couldn't. And moments later, he felt himself crashing straight into Brianna and they went tumbling into the snow. Oh my god, Brianna, are you alive? Is your neck broken? Please don't die, say something! Oh, can you shut up for just one second? Yes, of course. Oh, I thought I'd killed you. Charlie pulled her into a bear hug. You're really okay? Yeah, I just got the wind knocked out of me. Imagine the headlines if something had happened to you. Stupid worthless nobody injures beautiful teen goddess. You... you think I'm beautiful? Well, duh. That's not even opinion. It's just a scientific fact. The sun rises in the east, water boils at 100 degrees, Brianna's beautiful, you got some snow on your face. As they started making their way back, Brianna felt her heart racing. Oh, shake it off, Brianna. You cannot be attracted to your best friend's fake boyfriend. After an exhausting day of skiing, Charlie wanted to crash, but he had to dress up for a fancy dinner instead. The seats next to Maddie were taken, so he quickly took one next to Brianna. Please tell me, why are there six forks in front of me, and which one can I use to stab myself in the eye? Oh, definitely the meat fork for a quick death. Madison watched the two laughing, and she didn't like it. I don't want her getting more attention than me, even if it's from stupid Charlie. Hey, Charlie, could you sit next to Amber, please? Her parents couldn't come, and she, um, broke up with her boyfriend. She could use some cheering up. Charlie nodded reluctantly and took the seat next to Amber. So, Amber, you want to talk about your breakup? Um, okay, sure, why not? It happened three years ago, and his name was Leo. And that's what you're sad about today? That's a bit offensive. I'm not sad. 
Do I look sad to you? Just then, Brianna's mom, who was sitting opposite him, spoke. So, Charlie, where were you studying before? Uh, well, I was in public school in another town. I got a scholarship here, so I moved with my grandma, who raised me. And what does your grandma do? She's an amazing healer. She cures people with herbal medicines and different techniques. So she's not a real doctor? N no, not in the typical sense. And this healer thing, it makes her enough money? Mom, stop! It's okay. Yeah, she earns enough. And I work at the cinema. And I also DJ on the weekends. We manage to take care of each other. There was an uncomfortable silence, and Charlie felt his face turning hot. Then, Maddie's mom spoke with her country accent. That's sweet, honey. You seem like a brat kid, and I'm sure you'll go places one day. It's funny how life turns around. I mean, look at me. I was raising little Maddie as a single teenage mom in a trailer park with nothing. And then, boom, one day I won the freaking lottery, and we were rich. Soon after, I met my husband, and life's amazing now. Let's raise a toast to our blessings. Brianna looked over at Madison, who looked like she was going to crush her glass. She always felt ashamed of her past and that she wasn't born rich like everyone else. Just then, Amber said she wasn't feeling well, and as she was leaving, she tripped over the carpet and fell down. Amber, are you okay? Did you hit your head? No, I didn't. But it hurt so bad lately. And even my eyes, like sometimes I wake up and it takes me like two seconds to see the light and I swear the lights are on. You know, I'm a scared cute mouse, right? I don't sleep in the dark. Okay, I'm gonna take her to her room to rest. When Madison returns later to the main hall, she suddenly overheard Brianna's mom and another woman talking. <laughs> that woman sure loves to tell her trailer park story. She's been rich for years now, but she still sounds so trashy. Money can't buy class. And now look at Madison's choice of boyfriend. I mean, he's sweet, but no amount of designer clothes can hide where you really come from. Madison's ears burned as she stormed off and ran straight into Charlie in the hallway. Hey, I was looking for you. How's Amber? Why did you say all that nonsense at dinner? What? Oh, I'm on scholarship, and I work at the cinema, and my granny does voodoo. It's not voodoo. And why would I hide all that? It doesn't embarrass me. And even your mom was poor, and she's not ashamed of it. Well, she should be. I don't know why she keeps telling that story so proudly. No one respects her for it. And I don't want to be reminded of the cheap start of my life. She said all that stuff because of you. I've been trying to please you all day, Maddie, but I'm really tired now. I hate skiing. These clothes are pretend. And I don't like talking about my grandma like that. Charlie stormed off to his room, packed his things, and called a cab. Charlie didn't speak to Maddie for a few days, but he gave in after all her apologies. I'm really sorry, okay? I just wanted my stepdad to like you, and he's a bit <sighs> difficult. But I shouldn't have asked you to act differently. I like you, just as you are. Well, if you really want to make it up, you'll have to spend more time with my family now. Uh, of course. I volunteer at the community center for old people and take grandma there every Saturday. You should come. Can't wait. Madison had begged Brianna and Amber to accompany her. Eek. Oh, this place smells like disease and something rotten. Shut up, Maddie. And just act normal. After they'd all met, Charlie asked Maddie to help him set up a game of musical chairs while Brianna joined his grandma. I'm so glad to meet you girls. Charlie was certain he wouldn't make any friends at his new school. You've raised a pretty nice guy. Oh, trust me. I didn't do much. That kid was born with a heart of gold. Once when he was eight, he came home saying he'd lost his bicycle somewhere, and I was so mad. Well, a week later, I found him three streets down, teaching a little girl how to ride that bicycle. He told me that she'd lost her brother recently, and the cycle made her happy. She needed it more than he did. That's what he said. At eight. He's always been special. Later that night, Brianna's heart felt heavy when she got Charlie's text. Thanks for today, Maddie. It meant the world to me, and I love you. I love you too, Charlie. The next day, when Brianna showed Maddie the text, she was ecstatic. Finally! The three golden words! Uh, it's time for phase three of Project Plaything! 
dump his sorry butt. Yay! Then sushi in Tokyo! But, Maddie, he really cares about you, and dumping him out of the blue feels cruel. Can't we think of an easier way to let him down? But this was always the plan. Are we supposed to care about his feelings now? Well, yeah. We've gotten to know him, and I just think he would take this really hard. You know what? You're right. He is a bit oversensitive. Maybe I can be really difficult the next few weeks, and then he'll just get sick of me and be happy to break up. That sounds better. Thanks. After Brianna walked away, Madison turned to Amber. Who does she suddenly think she is, Mother Teresa? I'm tired of Charlie, and I want to pay him back for the times he was rude to me. I have the perfect plan to dump that loser. But don't say anything to Brianna, okay? Oh, I love it when we have secrets. Just the two of us. Three days later, it was Madison's birthday, and she was having a big party in a dance club with Charlie as DJ. Then suddenly, she climbed onto a table with a mic. May I have everyone's attention, please? I have something to say to our resident DJ. Everyone fell silent, and Brianna suddenly had a horrible feeling. As you all know, I've turned 17 today, and I just want to start this year fresh. So Charlie, I'll start with you, because I just can't fake things anymore. You were just a game to me, okay? To us. I got bored, so my girls and I decided to make you fall in love with me as a challenge. Actually, Brianna was the one who brought you to my attention. It's been fun messing around with you, but it's just made me realize that dating below my league isn't for me. I don't relate to you and your third world problems, dude. But thanks for a few fun weeks, and I'm sure you'll find a nice average girl soon. Ciao. Charlie just stared at her, frozen in his place.